morning, uh, I wanted to go over some of the um, improvement skills um, with your Scarlet Letter essay, but these are skills that you can use for um, any of your essays. Uh, so the skills we're going to be going over today, today is writing titles, uh, topic sentences, introductory phrases, punctuation, and explanation. Uh, just as a side note, please make sure that you go back and uh, watch the video on how to format an essay. Um, some of you were missing titles and page numbers and your headings weren't correct. Uh, you weren't double spaced, so please make sure you go back and watch that. Um, and I will try and post that into um, the Canvas assignment with this video. All right, so let's get started. Uh, so first off, uh, when you're writing titles, titles either describe, and I should say, the content of your essay, not the text that you read. Uh, so a lot of people gave me the title, the Scarlet Letter Essay. Um, although that is what your essay is about, um, it's not a good title. Uh, so one, you can choose a factual title. Um, so some of you who are writing about love is not shameful. So you, it could be unshameful love in the Scarlet Letter. Bargain, basement, essay, but, but way nicer than the Scarlet Letter Essay. Um, or you can also do clever. This is what I always went for when I was in college. Um, those of you who are writing about uh, Puritans being hypocritical. Um, so hypocritical Puritans, Poland, so notice that's a little factual, refusing to see gray in the scarlet letter. Aha. So that's kind of an interesting title. Notice it would be, um, actually it would need to be centered. Um, I love a colon title. So you get a factual and then you get something clever underneath. I notice that when you are talking about the title of the book, Anywhere else in your essay, it does get italicized or underlined to acknowledge that it is the title of a novel. Okay? All right, let's move on to our next topic. Okay, topic sentences. Topic sentences go at the beginning of each of your body paragraphs. They introduce your reader to what's in the topic. Okay? It should connect to the claim. So an example of this, Hester's embellishment of the A shows her strength. So if your paragraph is about Hester being a strong woman, through how she shows off the embellishment of A, that's a good topic sentence. Um, if another paragraph was about uh, Dimsdale being a hypocrite, Dimsdale's act of adultery is the height of hypocrisy. This lets me know that this paragraph is going to be about Dimsdale cheating with Hester, who is a married woman, and how this is hypocrisy. So you have to have a sentence at the beginning of each of your body paragraphs that tells your reader, here's what this paragraph is going to be about. Okay? Um, if you want, pause this presentation at any point and go back into your um, essay and start making uh, corrections. All right, next slide. Quotes. All right, um, some of you did a pretty good job with this, uh, but there is some room for improvement. Uh, make sure that you are using introductory phrases. Uh, you cannot start a sentence with a quote. If I see a quotation mark at the beginning of your sentence. That is not okay. Um, your um, introductory phrases need to be something like Hawthorne states comma, blah, Hester, blah. So whatever the quote is, all right? Um, notice here, I've got this big red arrow. Notice that there is not a period here because I've given the quote and then I have to give the page number. The period needs to go here, outside, or else this page number is just kind of floating on its own. Sorry about that. Um, so, and notice you can't double period because then that means this, again, this is becoming its own sentence because there was a period here. So notice it's a quote. Um, page number, period. Same thing here. According to the test, that's a fine introductory phrase, comma, Chillingsworth, boo, whatever the quote is, okay? No period, period goes here, okay? Questions about these, please send me, but go back into your essays and look and make sure that you have done this, okay? Um, an example of this, when Hawthorne says, that's our introductory phrase, what can thy silence do for him except to tempt him, tempt him, yea, compel him, as it were, to add hypocrisy to sin? Okay, so, so notice this is a little different. You've got your introductory phrase, but the author here, and this is a student writing, does not want to end the sentence. So notice the, the question mark is part of the quote. So yes, that's going there. But they want to start their explanation afterwards. So they've added the for, um, page number, comma, he is showing. So notice that if we get rid of this quote here, when Hawthorne says whatever, he is showing. So that's another way that you can add an explanation. And, and again, the punctuation is going to go after the page number. Okay. And by the way, this was a good explanation. So if you want to take a look at that. All right. And then now let's get into explanations. Uh, this is the hardest thing for all students to get. Um, so let's, let's talk about it. Uh, so explanations show your reader how the evidence, your quotes, 
connect to the topic, so that would be your topic sentence of the paragraph, and to the claim that is controlling your entire um, essay. Some um, sample explanations, there's also explanation stems in the argument, um, uh, the argument module in Canvas, so check those out as well. But I picked out the two that I think would would mo be most helpful for your essays. And again, this is gonna come right after your quote so that you are explaining how your evidence connects to the topic and to the claim. So an example would be this, um, this meaning the quote is significant because, and then you explain how that directly raises the claim, okay? Another example is the fact that, and you rephrase your quote, so the fact that Dimsdale's adultery is an, you know, Dimsdale's ad adultery proves or shows or demonstrates or illustrates, notice how this gives you lots of options, so no matter the source, whether it's a picture, whether it's a quote, so the fact that Dimsdale's adultery shows that, and then rephrase your claim, because. So this is your because phrase that introduces your explanation, all right? So again, go back into your essays and look at your explanations of your quotes and make sure you have something like this, okay? It's not just rephrasing your quote. You ha It's not just saying this shows adultery. You have to show how it shows the hypocrisy. Again, connect it back to the claim, okay? Um, taking a look here, again, this is from a student sample, you can see the explanation. The way that the townspeople treat Hester Prynne displays the true hypocrisy of the Puritan society. Great topic sentence, okay? Because this is connecting back to our topic of hypocrisy, um, and it's gonna focus on the treatment of Hester Prynne and how that shows hypocrisy, okay? For example, they are so quick to judge Hester when she has done wrong and to punish her for, for her sins. This should actually be a semicolon. However, when they realize that Hester is a beautiful, however, when they realize Hester is a beautiful seamstress. Incomplete thought, but he's now going to get into what he means. For example, when Hester first makes her appearance to the townspeople, the judgmental Puritan women gossip rudely about Hester. So, and kind of introducing me to the situation. One woman says, I'll tell you a piece of my mind. It would be greatly for the public behoof if we women, being of mature age and mature members and good re repute, should have the handling of such malefactress as the Hester Prynne. What think ye, gossips? Okay, so notice Hawthorne 46, that's our page number, period. This proves, so talking about the quote, this proves that the women and townspeople are judging her extremely harshly for her crimes. However, when the townspeople realize that Hester makes beautiful clothes, they decide to use her for her talents. It seems ironic that her talent for needlework was discovered by the beautiful letter A that she made for herself to wear for the punishment. So again, the irony here is touching to the hypocrisy, okay? So that's one example of a student from the essays. And so again, it's not perfect, but it does have a, a, a decent a bit of explanation, okay? Um, taking a look here, just some samples of this. If your claim is Ms. Hallman and Ms. Goodman are good friends, so this is not related to the Scarlet Letter, the evidence they hang out a lot, like like a lot. <laughs> Ms. Hallman was even in Ms. Goodman's wedding. So how would you explain this? The fact that, so that's your introducing, here comes an explanation. The fact that Ms. Horman and Ms. Goodman spend a great deal of time together proves that they are good friends because they never get sick of each other. This proves my point because, so now we're coming back to the claim, because you can only spend a lot of time with people you care about. Taken together, the large bonding of time they spend together and the fact that one was in the other's wedding proves their friendship because of the great deal of time and care these activities require. Okay, so notice that we've got our claim, here's our evidence, and this is a thorough analysis, a thorough explanation of how this evidence proves this claim. Okay, so take a look back at here, take a look back at some of our other samples um, if you need a little bit of help with that. Okay, so make sure that you watch this video and then go back into your essay and start making those corrections. All right, if you have questions, please email me. Thanks.